Look at verse 26. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. This, I mean, this is, this is starting to get clear. And verse 27, so he came by the Spirit. Do you see how in such close proximity, this man that we know nothing about is all about the working of the Spirit of God inside of him. Walking in the Spirit ensured for Simeon a life that mattered. We don't know anything else about him. He could have come and gone and, and without a, a marker on a gravestone. But what jumps off the page that records in his life is he had a life that counted because he walked in the Spirit. That's, that's what, what, what it means to walk in the Spirit. It means to be on duty. I mean, have you ever gone to a store and you have this new generation of people that act like it's a bother that you came in and they have to stop talking to each other and texting each other. They have to actually come over and do something. You know, it's kind of a new generation. It used to be you were mobbed. You know, when I grew up, you went into a store, you were mobbed. Now you have to stir up someone to work, you know, and say, excuse me, do you work here? They go, why? You know, <laughs> you say, because I always like to buy something. Okay. You know, and they put away their phone. And, and, but, but the old way was you were taught to be on duty. And if someone came in the door, you go, hello, hey, can I help you? You know, do you need some shoes, you know, or whatever you're selling? Simeon was on duty. See, that's what it means to be having the Spirit of God. It means you check in for work and you're on duty, knowing who you work for, wanting to please him, and saying, what do you want me to do in life? Well, God doesn't force this. God wants to work through us, but he doesn't force it upon us. In fact, someone in first service was showing me they had made a quilt for someone in the church, and it, it was real pretty. It had two hearts, but between it, there was a, a little strand, and it had two doves. And what it was showing is the Holy Spirit knitting hearts together, I think, was the picture. Why is the Holy Spirit portrayed as a dove? Because he's not a bully. Have you ever seen a dove come up and say, move out of the way, you know? That is not, I mean, when you have peace talks, they show an, a dove with olive branches. It's, it's, a dove is peaceful, not belligerent, not pushy, not forceful. How is the Holy Spirit described in the New Testament? Well, we're supposed to walk in the Spirit and wait for the Spirit and present ourselves and clothe ourselves and yield ourselves and surrender. Do you, do you see the flavor of how the Holy Spirit works? He invites us to yield to him. See, that's, that's the essence of the Spirit-filled life. Life as God intended it be for every believer is pictured by this simple, humble, obscure man. As we study his life, we need to ask ourselves, am I offering myself to the Lord to live like him? I mean, he only did what he did because the Spirit prompted him. I and you should want to live a life that would only work and people would say, the only way I can figure that they did what they did is the Holy Spirit prompted them to do it.